Welcome to our webinar. My name is Dr. Tara McCannell, and I'm the Director of the Ocular Oncology Service at the Stein Eye and Doheny Eye Institutes at UCLA. Welcome to part two of this three-part series on eye cancer and eye cancer surgery. We will have a chance to have your questions answered via social media if you have any. At today's session, we will be talking about how is the diagnosis of ocular melanoma made. We will be first review ocular melanoma. We will discuss why making the diagnosis can be a challenge. We will talk about the examination of a patient who comes to the office, including the actual ocular examination as well as some helpful imaging studies to help the diagnosis. Let's talk about what is ocular melanoma. Ocular melanoma, uveal melanoma, choroidal melanoma all refer to the same thing, eye cancer. Although it is rare, it is the most common primary tumor of adults. It is rare in that there are five to six cases per million per year. That equates to about 2,100 patients who are newly diagnosed per year in the United States. Although there have been many studies to look at associated risk factors, there have been no risk factors or particular exposures that have been identified that increase the risk of developing ocular melanoma. We do know, however, from epidemiologic studies that people with blue or green eyes tend to develop ocular melanoma more than people who have darkly colored eyes. We also know that people who have less pigmentation of their skin also seem more prone to developing ocular melanoma. Here is a diagram of the human eye. Right here is the lens of the eye that focuses light. This is what develops a cataract as we get older. Everything to your left we call the anterior segment of the eye, and that includes the cornea, the anterior chamber, and the lens. Everything behind the lens we call the posterior segment of the eye, and this is where an ocular melanoma may form. The inside of the eye is filled with vitreous, which is a clear substance around which the eye develops, and the retina lines the inner eye wall. This brown spot down at the bottom is a typical location of where an ocular melanoma may form, and it develops underneath the retina in the choroidal tissues. At the back is the optic nerve, which is where all of the retinal nerve fiber layers collect and go into the brain and result in our vision. Here is a photograph of an eye that has been removed or enucleated. You can see that the choroidal melanoma is shaped like a mushroom, and this is a typical appearance of a large size melanoma. You can also see that the retina, which looks like tissue paper, is detached, and we often find retinal detachment in association with the choroidal melanoma. How is ocular melanoma diagnosed? Well, there are a few ways. Sometimes on routine eye examination, the tumor may be discovered. It is common to have screening photographs taken of the retina when a person goes to their eye care provider. If there is a pigmented spot or other abnormality of the retina, this may be detected by photographs. And we tend to see many patients referred for small pigmented spots to make sure that there is no ocular cancer. Secondly, a patient may have altered vision that brings them to an eye care provider for evaluation. If the tumor itself is developing in an area close to the center of the vision, this can cause a decrease in vision for the patient. In addition, a person might notice a blind spot that is more apparent and persistent than had been before. Finally, a person can develop some, float, uh, some flickering and light sensations of the eye, and this can also signal a choroidal melanoma. It is important to realize, however, that there are numerous other, more benign conditions of the retina 
that can be responsible for these symptoms. Finally, a person may know that they have a freckle or a nevus already in their eye, and occasionally these can transform into a melanoma, just like an unusual freckle on the skin may change and become a skin melanoma. Here is a slide that shows a variety of pictures of an ocular melanoma. And you can see that they look many different ways. They don't all look the same, which is why it may be challenging to make the diagnosis. You can see that some have much pigment, some are lightly pigmented, and this particular melanoma of the iris appears to have no pigment at all, but a lot of blood vessels. How does ocular melanoma affect patients? In two main ways. It can affect their vision and it can affect their life. With the vision, the tumor itself may disrupt the eye depending on the location. The treatments that we use to, to destroy the melanoma in the eye can also have side effects that can harm the vision. More importantly, melanoma can affect a patient by spreading throughout the body, which we call metastasis. And in ocular melanoma, the cancer tends to spread to the liver. However, at the time that we diagnose an ocular melanoma, it is uncommon and quite rare for the tumor to have already spread in the body. Let's talk about why ocular melanoma may be a diagnostic challenge or difficult to diagnose. Because ocular melanoma is so rare, most ophthalmologists and most optometrists have not seen an ocular melanoma in a patient that they have examined before. In addition, there are many other conditions that are benign that can mimic an ocular melanoma or an eye cancer, so there can be a misdiagnosis. For example, retinal detachment, as I mentioned, can sometimes be associated with an intraocular tumor. Important to be evaluated very carefully to make sure that it is simply a retinal detachment and not something else. Blood underneath the retina, we call it a hemorrhage, can sometimes mimic a melanoma, but melanomas can present as looking like there's an area of blood when in fact it is a tumor. And scar tissue, so seeing an area of the retina that looks scarred or fibrosed, this can also really be a melanoma if one is not careful. And particularly the variable appearance, as, you see, if you, as you've seen on the previous slide, makes it possible that a diagnosis of melanoma may be challenging. The other thing is, that comes up quite a bit, is that there is no single test, there's no single imaging study that can tell for sure whether a lesion is a melanoma or not. What happens when a person comes into the office for examination who may have a melanoma? It is very important to take a detailed history. How was it discovered? Was it a photograph? Was there a sensation of flickering lights for a period of time? Are there no symptoms? These are all important clues to help come up with the correct answer. Are there other cancers in the family? In some patients with melanoma, there may be a higher prevalence of cancer in their family and cancers of different types. And we're as the more we understand about cancers, it seems like there may be a hereditary component to the susceptibility of getting cancer. And what symptoms does the person have? After the history, it is important to take a detailed eye examination. We examine both eyes very carefully because both eyes can give us clues. We look at the front of the eye, the cornea, the anterior segment and the lens of the eye, and we look at the back of the eye, the retina, the macula, and the optic nerve. And all of these components are very important to gather the information that's needed to come up with the correct diagnosis. And to, to emphasize, the history and exam of the patient is essential in the diagnosis of ocular melanoma. When we look at a single imaging test or a single photograph, it's not always possible to tell what the answer is. Imaging studies, photographs and scans, which I will describe in more detail to you, provide objective data 
that help to support the diagnosis. So if we see a patient and examine them and it looks very much like a melanoma, these additional tests will be consistent with the diagnosis. The testing also provides a baseline. If, we're, if we see a patient who doesn't have a melanoma, the tests are very important as we evaluate the patient and follow up. We have something to compare it with. And certainly, if the person indeed has a melanoma, the tests provide important parameters for designing the treatment for that individual patient. Let's talk about the imaging tests. The important studies that we feel are important are ultrasonography, color photographs, fluorescein angiography, and optical coherence tomography, or OCT. Let me share with you a case and illustrate how these tests may be helpful. Here is a gentleman who is in his 70s who was found to have this pigmented lesion. Here is the optic nerve. The macula is that central area without vessels. That's the center of the vision. And here is a possible choroidal tumor. And the question is, is this the melanoma or is this something benign? If you take a closer look at this lesion, it is elevated. It looks like there is a scar or there's some yellow tissue on it and there's some drusen and pigment. So maybe it's benign. Here's the drusen and drusen are findings that require a long period of time to develop. And here is pigmentation in a very focal area. Again, a, a, a sign that takes time to develop. So one might believe that this is a benign lesion. If we use our ultrasound, ultrasound is performed in two parts. We actually get an image, a three-dimensional image of the back of the eye. And here is the tumor that's sticking out. We also do an A scan, this part, which looks at the sound waves and their reflectivity pattern through the lesion. And melanomas have a characteristic type of sound wave pattern. And there are two images. This is another, another dimension view of the tumor, and this is a different view of the tumor. So we have a lot of information here. And this is an example of what fluorescein angiography is. So you can see the color picture to your left, and fluorescein angiography is a test where a vegetable dye is injected intravenously in the photography suite and photographs are taken immediately afterwards because the dye lights up as yellow, I'm sorry, as white, as you can see here, as it's coursing through the vessels and it happens instantly. So we can study the circulation of the retina as well as know about the circulation of a lesion or a tumor that we're evaluating. And you can see in this example that the tumor itself is leaking fluorescein dye. So that is a sign of activity. And here is an example of optical, optical coherence tomography. And here's the melanoma. And here is an image where we are scanning through. And you can see that to the right there are areas of subretinal fluid. So fluid is a sign of activity because there are active cancer cells that are leaking fluid. In a larger melanoma, the fluid is much more extensive and constitutes a retinal detachment. So the diagnosis here is ocular melanoma. Here's another case. This is a young man who had been followed for quite some time with this sort of scar-like lesion with a little bit of pigment. And over time, this lesion wasn't really going away and it was very unusual. So we saw this patient. Here's an ultrasound that shows the thickness of the lesion and the ultrasound, and the ultrasound patterns through the lesion. Here is the fluorescein angiogram where the dye is injected through the vein and we can study the circulation of the retina vessels and the vessels of the lesion. And you can see as we take sequential photographs, there is an intense amount of activity in this area because there are abnormal vessels that are leaking. 
And when we look at the OCT scan through the lesion, there is indeed subretinal fluid associated with that tumor. So the diagnosis in this case is also ocular melanoma. This is a patient who had a lot of blood, as you can see, at the macula. You can see there's red and also some yellowish color. And then there's this unusual looking lump here in the middle of it all. But a common disease that older people have is a condition called age-related macular degeneration, where you can get bleeding and abnormalities in the macula. However, this spot did not clear away. So this patient was referred to us and ultrasound showed that it was a fairly elevated lesion with reflectivity patterns consistent with a melanoma. Also, this lesion did grow with time. And the diagnosis in this case is ocular melanoma. This is a last case that I'll share with you. You can see this unusual looking yellow lesion that looks like it's stuck there on the retina. This patient had had a hemorrhage in the eye, which the previous doctor did a, a surgery to clear the blood and found this little yellow mass there. However, this mass did not resolve or go away. In fact, it seemed to get a little larger. And you can see when we do fluorescein angiography through this, it has its own circulation. You can see the white vessels within it. And there is a lot of staining and leakage and activity around the lesion. Here is an ultrasound that shows that the the lesion itself sort of has a mushroom configuration with a little bit of a cap. That is very characteristic of an ocular melanoma. So in this particular individual, ocular melanoma was also diagnosed. So to summarize, I've shared with you some basic background of ocular melanoma, why it can be challenging to come up with the correct diagnosis, what we do in our examination at the office with people, examining the patient as well as some helpful imaging studies that can support our diagnosis. Thank you very much. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. So I'll repeat the questions that have uh, come forward. Are diabetic patients more prone to getting ocular melanoma since we are typically prone to visual issues? So there is no evidence or data that people with diabetes are at more risk. So whether a person has diabetes or not does not influence whether they will develop an ocular melanoma. The next question is, how aggressive is this cancer? And in this particular seminar, I did not discuss what makes a melanoma aggressive or not. Usually by aggressive, we mean how likely is this cancer going to spread throughout the body. In melanoma, the risk factors, the major risk factors are how large the tumor is when we find it. So the smaller the melanoma, the less likely that the cancer will spread in the body. The other risk factor is there are now markers that tell us some features of the chromosomes within the tumor that we can test for. And some melanomas are low risk for spreading, whereas others have a higher risk of spreading. Um, the next question is, is ocular melanoma surgery covered by insurance? And the answer is yes. Our final question is, how long is the recovery process for ocular melanoma surgery? And this topic was addressed in a previous webinar, but to summarize, there is a period of time, about one week, when the radiation treatment is in the eye, where a person may have some discomfort as the tumor is being treated. However, once the radiation treatment is removed and the, person, the tumor has been completely treated, most people recover in a few weeks. Thank you very much.